So as we go on in the data preparation and the fine tuning, these are the things that we're gonna be looking at. Uh, so if we can, uh, so yeah, so this is the general overview of where we're going. So first we start with data collection and data collection, as most of you know, it was a very challenging process uh, because Amharic data set is not as common. So as we prepare the data, we prepare the data for two things, as I was just saying, right? We prepare it for complete fine tuning and then we prepare it for uh, uh, classification tasks, specifically. So uh, we use Telegram as, as our data source. Uh, and also we did search through Kegel and Kegel has actually good data sets if we want to train it for uh, completion training. And so, but, but mainly we use Telegram because it is relevant. Uh, the data is relevant, the data is recent, and it has a niche data set of our market goal. So, uh, so we, we basically uh, targeted companies. So uh, we were provided with a list of industries which we might target real estate, telecom, entertainment, media, and so on. So we targeted uh, different companies such as uh, Safari Home, for example, for telecom and Panel Plus, DSTV for entertainment uh, and others. And uh, we wrote different scripts. So even, uh, for example, for Fekgar Gavita, they just provide a link where we can go and scrape the data for Amharic advertisements because what they provide basically is, is an English advertisement with a link to, an, to the Amharic set. And yeah, so in that way, first, we just collected a lot of data from uh, Telegram and already a clean data from uh, from Kegel, a topic, and then and then nextly, Nasrallah. Okay, so next, once we have the data, we prepare the data. Uh, what what that what that meant for our project was we prepare it for the classification fine tuning. So in the so before. Uh, all of this, uh, just to give a clear onset, we did clean the data, which, which, uh, which is a long process of, uh, for example, we needed to get rid of stop words. Uh, stop words are they are very common in in almost every data set, but they, but they are useless. They don't communicate anything useful, or they don't help uh, the the model learn anything useful about the language or about. Uh, how to determine patterns in between ads and not ads and others. So we, we got rid of stop words, we got rid of hashtags, we got rid of the links and all that. Uh, and after we, we did all of that, now you prepare data for specific thing. And here specifically, what we first targeted was classification. So in classification, uh, basically it's, uh, as most of you were doing, uh, you just have to label it as ad and not ad. Uh, mainly, and then you can further specify another if you want to do, again, a training set so as to help uh, the machine learning make uh, a distinction. So basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance out the number of ads and the number of not ads, and then, and then see if, you know, what we have right now is enough for the machine learning uh, or for, for the large language model to, to draw out a pattern if it's enough uh, to differentiate between the different, uh, be between ads and not ads, and then in between the ads, the different ads. So that's the big task, and that's what we prepared the data for. And, and once the data is prepared, uh, we can continue. So uh, the data was, uh, so we tried to diversify the data between financial, entertainment, travel, telecom, real estate, uh, as was in demand and as was present and we feel like it, it, it had enough diversity at least to know that uh, you know our our training set and our our training process were uh, yeah so that's what we did around the data and next we will proceed with the fine tuning right and uh, thank you possible so on the fine tuning is going to be the presenting part 
for it. So in here, we will actually try to discuss uh, the type of defined learning we intend to do, the tokenizer, and why we select our model that we, we will discuss, actually stable AI, and why we go with stable AI and so on. So uh, Ms. Ghanou, if you are here, you mind if yeah, yeah. Can you... Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Please continue. Yeah, so... Yeah, the you can still put the fine tuning part. So, uh, in our group, first we try to to build the class in fine tuning. So we believe for, for first the model has to understand. First the model has to identify ads from new ads. So we try to to build the classification. So basically, what we did was we give the message a message to our model and the the model which classified as an ad or not an ad. Yeah, we try to do this and we somehow get a good result, even though it classifies most of the that the message has ads. Yeah, we did good with this part and then we proceed to the next part, which was ad generation. We give it a level and based on that level, it tries to generate an ad or American ads. Yeah, this was our second uh, fine tuning. So for the fine tuning, we, we try to use the stable AI. And we chose stable AI for three main reasons. The first one is its performance. So uh, stable, stable AI has uh, three billion parameters. Yeah, and it's it's far more enough for our, our training. It's enough to train our model for our specific test. Yeah, and it's also a balance between performance and efficiency. And the second reason is since we're trying to get an ad from from the model, since we are doing instruction fine tuning, so the model has has to have a capability of question answering. So we, we found out that stability is good on this part as well in question answering. The last part in the last reason uh, why we chose stability was its lightweight. So one thing uh, I found out when I try to train different models, when for example, Mr. One thing I found out is. Uh, after if after some specific step, so it's it's going to take. I mean, the current GP we have, uh, twenty four, uh, twenty four GP. For other models, after some steps, yeah, it it becomes full. Or I can't I can't train with uh, twenty. I mean twenty four GP. But for for the stable AI, what I found is I can train with hundred and hundred fifty steps, and yeah, it 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 just loses. Uh, our memory, our, our GPU memory. Yeah, that's the main three reasons which is the stable AI. Yeah, so uh, next step. So, so when you try train, to train the model for the classification part in the art generation, we try to 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 use three three tokenizers. The first one is the model's own tokenizer. So we tried that, and it did good on the on the loss part, it means the training loss. The training loss was lower or lost with this, the the models, uh, the models tokenizer. The thing is, the tokens, the, the tokens generated using the models tokenizer were not even Amharic. And it doesn't, uh, even the, the tokens doesn't make sense and the as generated was not Amharic. It's just some, uh, some random words that's not Amharic. So it was not performing good on the, the, the model is on tokenizers. We have to try something else. We, we tried the, another Amharic tokenizer. So we first started with the Gary models tokenizer. We tried, yeah, it, it, it generates some Amharic ads. The Gary one, it generates some Amharic ads, even though some of the words doesn't make sense and it generates long uh, Amharic words that doesn't make, uh, that doesn't have meaning. No, yeah. yeah. That don't have meaning. It generates some long. Yeah, the, the only problem you had with the Gary models tokenizer was the training loss was very high. Uh, it was around 10, 11. So we we thought maybe if you could implement our own tokenizer, the training loss might be low. So we started implementing our own tokenizer using sentence piece and the token size of 10,000. We tried to train our model. Then, yeah. Uh, with this, yeah, the training loss at the start, it was higher. And then we increased the number of tips to 100. Yeah, at, at the end, the training loss 
becomes 1.2. Yeah. And we stick with the custom tokenizer. Yeah, this was the, the steps we followed. And finally, what we got, yeah, somehow we, we were able to classify messages as add or not add, even to the, most of the, 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 the message classified, the message classified were ads. And another thing, yeah, it was able to generate some Amharic, Amharic uh, words, even though it doesn't have meaning. Yeah, we tried our best and yeah, we learned a lot. This was this was our progress of the finding tuning part. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So uh, just to add more into um, what Ms. Gano was talking about is that and one of the reasons why we couldn't go with also like the main the Gary model and or the Gary tokenizer couldn't work with us because it might be due to difference of the machine uh, of our LLM since we were using a different LLM that could be some of the main reason why we, we were losing a lot in terms of trend lost and, and compared to compared to our custom tokenizer and when when Ms. Kay was trying to actually mention that or talk about the custom tokenizer with 10k and even though the initial height was uh, around nine point or and how do i say uh, with this figure i will discuss more into it is that even though the on the fifth step uh, the initialization was around 9.8 as you can see guys and and up to, and uh, how do i say it yes so the training loss for 100 step that we figured it out with our custom tokenizers is that with, with five step is actually high and it start with 9.9.8 then the more we go down and more and as you can see on the 10 step we become an 8.8.0 and the fifth on the fifth step we somehow be able to hit the target of 1.5 1.8 and lastly and we were able to hit 1.2 um 1.286 and uh, as of as of the hundred steps of, of our fine modern training and uh, and this is actually good as a uh, uh, initiations for our uh, 10k uh, tokenizer or sent it's synchronous piece uh, tokenizer even though we are not be able to or don't have the good ability of writing the right tokenizer for this purpose or for this project uh, we were able to somehow reduce the number to one point to while, uh, while other other models that we were testing it actually was higher and always was ending around five 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 loss which is or five point something loss which is considered to be high in terms of the training loss. So and in this figure we can see it uh, and how how the initialization was was it and how we were able to reduce it to uh, less than two in our training loss. Saying that uh, we will actually go detail into the RAG. With our RAG actually pipeline, we didn't intend to, we try to go with the uh, GPT-4 embeddings and OpenAI. Even though we were able to generate a rich um, text, it actually struggled with common sense. And that makes sense because of uh, lacking of logicality and from uh, retrieving text, uh, Amharic text specifically from, from a given context. And that's actually one of the things we look into it. And, and maybe if we had the right fine tuning model, we were able to literally uh, retrieve from it. I tried to test it with Llama 2, um, but it was the same result actually. If, even like uh, to be more precise, GPT 4 was somehow better than Llama 2, but yeah, um, that's actually an output on based on the, the RAG pipelines we implemented. Um, other things, um, the things we would like to share with you guys is that we try to implement the boat or a web app inside a boat for our client app. This has actually been implemented by my teammates, uh, Apamichu, who is not here. And he was the responsible of building the whole client app, even though our client app is finished and is done. And also Aaron was responsible of the back end. And, uh, and both of them are not here today, but we were we weren't we were able to integrate the whole or assemble the whole project together into one thing because of not having a good um, a, a fine-tuned model that can generate Amharic ads, but yeah, this is a bit. On the end, 
I just don't want to take a lot, much time. On the end, we have some of the future work we suggested by uh, from us or from our process is that the data pre-processing for us, as you might, we might need to automate the process of labeling and increase the data set for productions, great uh, product. And for the fine tuning, the completion of the fine tuning of stable AI, actually, we need to enhance the Amharic understanding of the LLM. And ironically, one thing that Ms. Gano forget to mention is that actually this is could be the point, or this is, or it could be the ins the main insight we find it as a team is that even though having, even though most of the or the other other teammates or other group members went to existing model with more than uh, five billion parameters, sticking with a small, tiny or, or a small uh, efficient model actually will help you to produce exactly what you want because it has one thing that you can't find in the large model like Llama and Mistral is that the flexibility of customizing the or the flexibility of customizing and the efficiency of you doing it in the way you want. So. It would be actually a good suggestion if, if the Aquim team take into the considerations the fact of trying to go with lightweight uh, models because the language of Amharic itself is actually a minority language. So maybe just choosing a minority um, uh, or how do I say like a lightweight model, then try to uh, op uh, optimize it and give it a more data a more dense data set so that you could understand Amharic will be more flexible and will fit the purpose of ad generating. That's actually as a as a, as a, as a suggestions for the Akun teams. Maybe the maybe if they look into that part, that would be nice. Um, and on terms of RAG, uh, the RAG system is actually it is working fine, but it, it doesn't make sense to have a RAG that can extract Amharic context without not having what we call an actual Amharic fine tune model that actually know what we need to uh, retrieve from the RAG systems and so on. So just just to give uh, more hint on this RAG part is that we want to enhance the extraction of the information. And what we mean by this is the user input in here. Um, then try to improve the evaluation matrix. And because we are not actually using a good evaluation matrix for, for, for this week, projects were lacking some of the things. Maybe another suggestion we would, we would have on the RAG is actually investigation, the transferments and, and hybrid architectures for improving performance with the integrity of reasoning capability. And just to add more on that, we might be really also need to take a consideration of uh, advanced RAG way of implementing, like using multi-query based on user input and so on. So that's an overview of our future works. We try to make it as simple as we can, so that we could just give you guys an insight of it. The details of everything could be found on our report. So yeah, thank you. That's all. That, thanks, Group Six. Mikis. I just raised my hand that to let you know that we'll be present in the next. That's all. Oh. Has anyone read or understood the impact of changing tokenizer when you find you in a way that, you know, are you aligning the model, the pre-trained model with your uh, adapter in a sense that that could be the, the main reasons why it's of course very hard, like because the, the weights that are in the pre-trained model is defined by a different vocabulary than that the one you are the adapter. So has anyone checked? So Yvonne. Hello everyone. So I can say I experienced firsthand the effects of changing a tokenizer. As you know, first of all, I was using, I was trying fast text and then I was using an Amharic tokenizer because it doesn't have one. So I decided to go and pick another one from Hagen Face. Well, that didn't go well, and I started to change the model. So yeah, if you change the tokenizer, the model will not perform well. It won't work. For me, it didn't work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so OK, good. I think we'll, and, and at next time that we actually do probably the week from next week, the, there will be a 
tutorial like they, the challenge is more on um rug and completely on precision rug but in this case there will be a company that is actually interested to hire as well so maybe in that time we will discuss the you know we'll read and discuss okay so uh Mikas, then you can proceed okay. unless there you know if there are questions to group six and all the groups that are presenting we can do it at the end just so that everyone has a time to present. So, Mikes, your group can go. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, now we can see your screen. So, some of uh, our team members are having a connection issue and they'll join us as soon as uh, they fix that. But overall, uh, this is the presentation about the progress we made. So the main objective of this project was to create a Telegram bot that will generate uh, an Amharic ad based on the channel information in some came, uh, campaign uh, information as well. That's the whole idea of the project. So the first thing that we did was before data cleaning and pre-processing, we assign tasks for each other so that someone can work on different parts of the project. And the first thing that we did was data cleaning and processing, and me now was working on this. And we used uh, things like uh, modules like Dmoji, and we also used the Python tra trading module for con concurrency, which is for cleaning data, uh, I mean, cleaning multiple files uh, using different trades. And now we'll uh, go on and explain how we did it. You will uh, elaborate, elaborate me more so now can you hear me? yes we can hear okay. uh, good morning everyone so uh, as Mikias uh, said uh, before uh, fine-tuning the model uh, first we need to have a, a, a data prepared so uh, uh, before pro proce proceeding uh, to other ta tasks, we started with the data preparation. So uh, from the data provided to us uh, from uh, from the Pain Academy team, uh, we, we couldn't find the message that has a, a lot of ads. So uh, after uh, after uh, looking at uh, those data provided to us, uh, we decided to uh, try another approach. Uh, after that, we had to find a uh, other te telegram channels uh, with much number of ads so then we uh, exported the uh, json data for uh, each channels we found then uh, we after we are done with the, the, the data extraction uh, part we uh, uh, proceeded to the data cleaning so uh, in order just to perform the data cleaning we wrote a, a python script that of things like uh, handling missing values uh, and uh, removing the hashtags, uh, removing emojis. And also we, the script uh, can uh, replace the input strings with uh, non values. Then we added another uh, additional column that counts the number of So um, we, we took uh, the message that has uh, a length of uh, greater than 20. Uh, uh, then after uh, we did the cleaning part, we, uh, we had to uh, manually label the, the message uh, according to the uh, tags provided by the project uh, documentation. So uh, after we did the data extraction and the data cleaning part, we uh, successfully labeled the, the message uh, as we did label the as much as data uh, we can. So this is from my side. Elias or Biniam can continue from this. Thank you. Um, uh, 
Okay, so um, try the different tokenizers in the first place to try to, you know, to help us tokenize the data that's available. You use the Garis tokenizer and Lama's tokenizer, but we couldn't get a uh, satisfying result from all of them. So we had to code our own tokenizer in the first place. Uh, from the ADOS, differently uh, and we coded two types of tokenizers uh, in our own, you know, uh, on our own. So uh, I used the BP advice uh, here in Coder, uh, also I would tokenize and trained on English corpus of our data with 80,000 uh, vocabulary size and uh, surprisingly it was very good. Uh, I also, we also trained it on our own data, but uh, the vocabulary was not that much good, so it could not handle some cases. So I uh, used the uh, openly available Amharic data to put our own tokenizer, and this is the result, as you can see it. It can identify the vocabularies from, you know, a sentence that's um, that's, that doesn't have any kind of white space between it. And uh, this was highly efficient. Uh, this was the result. And we pushed the tokenizer into our office so other uh, groups who are struggling with tokenizers can use achievements in the first week, not the early, uh, early days of the first week. Uh, yeah, so. Can you use the slide? Thank you. Um, okay, so this was a success, and we then proceeded to try to use uh, LoRa and other fine tuning techniques, parameter and fine tuning. Um, can you go back? Can you go back? Yeah. Okay. So, um, since the data was unlabeled and labeled data was small, then since we had less experience in working with LLMs in a parameter efficient way, um, we tried to um, the information that we were finding online about training. Uh, unsupervised data that has that does not have any labels were you know kind of surprising um most of the blogs and other articles we read told us that we need so many uh, much more than the gpu capacity than we had in the first place so we were kind of trying to find out a way to train the unsupervised data in a you know, memory efficient way. Surprisingly, we thought it only works for uh, the supervised or labeled data, but then came across LoRa, and uh, yeah, we we just trained the unsupervised data, and we got a loss at ranges from ten to forty. It's not just forty, but sometimes it's uh, it it was overshooting up to like a hundred range and up to four hundred and we identified that it's an issue with hyperparameters and we tried to find the best hyperparameters but even with the most optimal hyperparameters we cannot optimize the loss uh, and then we found out that the data that we merged around the end um, this is kind of you know different for example around the end that we used for validation is all about sports and in the first there are channels like Tikva and news content and other Amharic content, and around the end it had uh, English letters and English content. So uh, the data was not balanced, so we tried to balance the data. When we split it, we shuffled the data very well to distribute, to evenly distribute the content. And then finally, with the right parameter, we got a loss of 0 0.8 and 1.8. That was the range, we trained it again and again, but we could not go down below zero point eight. Uh, we merged the LoRa adapters with the base model and then pushed the 
Promoter that was merged into Harding Hex to another use. So we can again show super, we can again train it uh, on a label of data. And we also made it publicly available as, as a group. But, so this was what we did here. We find team down super guys. This took a lot of time since uh, we could not just get a workaround around it. So this was the training loss. The, um, and then there's the eval and the, there's the evaluation loss that we actually use. So it's just screenshot. Uh, but the, even if after having this much loss, it was kind of not good. Uh, after we find the data about the data factor, it just kind of tells us. Um, I'm hurting that doesn't make sense at all, and we thought it's a problem with the data since the data has so many repeated you know, sentences and lyrics and letters. For example, some channels have repeat the word share or join or like more than 10 times. And I personally thought this was the reason why the one was repeating so many things. Um, yeah, so our solution was to it kind of didn't work still, but uh, it kind of didn't work, but most of, we tried different models, like models that, that outperform uh, one of them the reasoning. You know, for example, uh, we even tried Mistral in smaller models such as Microsoft Fire and Tiny Lama and everything, but the result was the same. It's, so we thought it's a, it's, it's a problem without data. So we tried to to try to, to work with, you know, a defined set of data, which is a smaller. But I don't think that makes it like so, you know, it makes it kind of overfit the, the data that's available because the smaller the data, it's just, got, it's just not going to generalize newer content. So when you tell it, it's just going to tell you everything that it needs, but you cannot generalize new things. So that was one other problem. Um, yeah, moving to the next. Yeah, we also used the we also used the label data that was provided by Latin and I think most of it was not labeled. So we tried to merge the data from other groups as well. But yeah. our format was different and time was against us. So it was basically, uh, yeah, we ran out of time trying to increase the size of our data so the model can perform better. Uh, this was a pitfall that we encountered. And also, uh, we were working on different environments, each of us. For example, some of us were working on Google Colab when our instance was failing, and some of us were working on Cadre. And uh, yeah, around the fine tuning, uh, I have to say we have we have covered a lot of content trying to make it work, but uh, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, we did not succeed or get the results that we wanted. Um, yeah, this was from my side. There is still some work left, but I think we'll figure it out on our own. Can you okay. go to the next um, slide? Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm back. Continue. Yeah, continue, Mikes. Do, do you guys have other slide to present, or is this the last uh, slide? Yes. Uh, okay. It was not uh, since we were on the final team. I was hoping to add something, but if time is okay against us, yeah. Can so just, I mean, can you just make it faster? And just can you finish it in the next three minutes so that because we have another group? Okay. Okay. So. Oh. Okay. Finally, we can talk about the new stuff. Uh, hi everyone. Hi everyone. So I was responsible for the full stack side of uh, the project. You can hear me, right? I'm on the way. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Okay. So, 
this means I'm going to try to make it fast. So for the front end, I chose React, uh, which is something that I used before. So I wanted to get to get in deep with it so that I can learn more. Uh, and for the back end, I used Fast API. It, it is the, the fastest API uh, that I found when I researched, and it is easier to implement. So I chose that and to connect the UI and the back end. I used Axios, and Axios is a promise-based HTTP client, uh, which means uh, it doesn't rely on callbacks, so it you know uh, avoids a lot of boilerplate code, and it is very easy to implement. So I chose that. So for the full stack, the first thing that I tried to do was you know to implement a sample rod pipeline and trying to uh, display on the UI and you know, try to integrate all the back end and front end stuff. So I did the, that for the first time. Uh, for the UI, uh, okay, Mickey, you're going a bit fast. <laughs> Can you go back? Yeah. So the second thing that I did was uh, trying to integrate Hugging Face with our project, which I did uh, trying to load uh, models from Hugging Face directly because our plan was after we're done with the fine tuning and, uh, you know, pre the model, we're going to publish it in Hugging Face and trying to load it back into our project and use it that way. So that was the thing that I was trying to do. So you can go into the next slide, Miki. Uh, so after that, I mean, to provide a finished product, uh, what I did was assuming that the RAG pipeline uh, is going to be done, uh, I tried to add a trial input layout uh, to add a context to the you know, ad generation uh, context, and it also accepts user description about the ad. And after it generates the ad, it also displays it like this, as is shown in the UI. So for the lessons learned, since I was involved with the full stack, like I went in deep with uh, React. I was more focused on React, so I, you know, uh, advanced my knowledge in that part. I try to use different components, try to use hooks, trying to get more intermediate with UI components. Uh, I also learned how to interact with Hugging Face Hub and trying to load more models about that. And I also learned a bit about fine tuning since I wasn't directly involved with that. I was you know, in the meetings and also researching about that and you know trying to get some ideas about how it works. So this is the part that I did. And next, I think, it was about the rat part. So I think Lilian will go. Thank you. Thank you, Fanel. Right. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Lilian. OK, I'll give you a brief overview about the rack part we did. Um, so the way I implemented this work was to use a vector database from long chain, which is called API SS. Uh, I found it very efficient and I tried to write the key features so that others can use it another time when we have a uh, rug implementation project. Uh, the reason I chose FAISS was because it returns the case nearest neighbor. Uh, it can search several vectors at once. It uses range search and it also doesn't affect our run and it's very efficient. Um, the only back uh, log I found from it is because that's it only uses um, text document documents, dot, dot txt documents, but I think we can manage to do that. Uh, the technical procedure I did to implement this rack was a uh, text splitter. I used lang chain uh, for the embedding. I used the opening on embedding. Uh, so for the vector store, as I told you, I used FASS. And for the language model, I used chat opening I. And for the memory, I used, I used long chain memory. Uh, the reason I used LLM for the chat opening I was because I wanted to have a working pipeline that uh, receives the context that retrieves and generates an output. And um, can you show the next slide? Uh, the RAG system is tested on English document. The pipeline works perfectly. I give it week seven's challenge document, as you can see, and it was giving me accurate answers. I asked it what deliverables are there. It gave us an answer. And uh, we were planning to use our model after we push it into hanging phase for the generation part of the RAG. 
uh, but yeah, due to unforeseen circumstances, we were not able to push the model, so it doesn't work real with some hard contexts. But um, this is what we have for the wrap part. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So sorry, guys, for taking the time. I think we can be done here. These are some of the challenges that we faced and the remaining tasks. Uh, so uh, I don't think I, I, I need to go in detail with them because the, most of my teammates have mentioned them. So thank you for the time. Yeah. Great. No, I, good. Um, again, you know, it's the most important lesson is to be excited even when you when you don't achieve what you plan to achieve and work should be independent of you know you try everything you you have in the uh, and then whatever comes out be excited and see what what lessons has been learned and what could have been achieved so that's for every every group um yeah there were lots of challenges and as you know the challenge we gave you was not something that we knew so that means we were co-figuring uh, together and yeah uh, so at least dividing the work and the teamwork seems to have worked because every component has been at least been ready to um, had it been that the model was ready. So that's good. Uh, group four. Okay. Good morning, Abuba. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Uh, give you give me some second to share my screen. Uh, yeah. First of all, uh, I want to make sure that we be free to present because uh, our other members are not available now to join us. So it will be uh, Yvonne, Alexander, and I who will be in charge of the presentation. Okay. Can you see my screen? We see your screen. So just for the sake of after this, just download it. Don't just show it from there. Download it and open it. I think that's cool. It's important that you don't you show you you show what is downloaded, not just on uh, in late window. So if you could just download the document and then share it on its own. Okay, good. Uh, so you have the download second. button. Yeah. Yeah. Give me some seconds to do that. And then you can do some presentation. So you can go up on the file or right click and then you can do presentation, present here. And then Thank zoom. You. So you can zoom it as well so that it's now in a better screen. Control plus or anything, then that will zoom. Yeah. Control plus is now working. Or Control Shift Plus. Okay, so or with them. Okay, so we can continue. Just there should be a screen that should give you. If you write, if you just click on it, what do you get? Control Plus. Make it Control Plus. Yeah, the Control Plus doesn't work. The Control Shift Plus also doesn't work. Okay, so it's fine. Just continue. 
Okay. So, welcome everyone for the presentation of Group 4. Uh, for the two last week, we were focusing on uh, the project uh, to build at the end uh, a solution that will generate in America uh, some advertisement while uh, we give uh, a product uh, name and uh, the brand. So to be able to do that, uh, we split uh, the project uh, in four parts, the data processing, then the uh, fine tune part, the rack system building, and the, the UI. So, uh, Without further ado, I will let Alessandra to present the data processing part. Thank you. Can, can I share, Rodolf, may you stop your yes. and share my mind? Oh, okay, good. If you, you work. For me. Okay. Okay. Let me let me sorry sorry for it. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you. For the Stoics project, uh, I worked on mostly the data part. Uh, so I would like to present on the data. When you come to the project, building rag, uh, building rag system to generate Amari ad taglines and telegram ad posters. Uh, the main, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go on. Okay. Okay. The main objective of the project is to fine tune an open source LLM language model uh, to create an Amharic ad taglines. Uh, in our case, we have selected uh, two LLMs. One is a large language, which is Lama 2, and the other is uh, Earth model. Finally, we come up with the Earth model. Uh, when you come to the data source, uh, we have the telegram, uh, the Amari telegram data. Uh, the data have two sources, uh, meaning we collected the data by ourselves from uh, different sources, uh, even the data that are available in previous researchers. We have collected uh, and we had some data from nothing else so uh, we have uh, collected enough amount of data more than uh, 20,000 data collected after that we uh, after collected our uh, target data we go into data cleaning because data cleaning is the, the most facing the uh, data related uh, projects we have cleaned the analytics data to enhance the quality of the model uh, we have treated the null values using uh, removing null values in any other technique, uh, unwanted, eliminated the unwanted characters, symbols, and usernames for clarity of the model, removing the hashtag, normalization. We have normalized all techniques for uh, standardization into large case conversation. We recognized uh, our data using uh, sentence piece. Uh, in our case, we have not uh, compared different tokenizers. Uh, as you all uh, recommend to use Gary model, and uh, Gary model is the most uh, rich Amharic text. So we try to use Gary model. Uh, we would plan to use Gary model and use same thing space for tokenization. We label our data uh, in twice. 
the using AI labeled and uh, human. So we can classify the instance into either add or not add. In our data set, uh, there are many types of ads, such as uh, there is a retail uh, ad, uh, transportation, religious, politics, real estate, health, entertainment, job, and media. After we pre-processed our data, we have reached to 17,189 data with two columns. So uh, after we prepare the data, we are going to fine tuning uh, our model. As I told you in the fine tuning, we have tried to do two LLM parts. Uh, thank you for the next uh, part. I think Yvonne is uh, pre prepared and she tried to present it. Yvonne, would you continue? Yes. So, hello again, everyone. Uh, in our group, I was the one responsible for fine tuning the model. Um, Alexandra, if you could please stop sharing a screen, I will highly appreciate it. Okay. So I just wanted to share these stats. They were amazing and unbelievable. So as you know, okay, I, there is a reason why I'm sharing a notebook. So as you know, we first tried using the LAMA 2 model, the Gary model. And in our group, the Gary model had a header er a header error so we were try we tried to debug and tried to debug took a whole first week trying to just debug that error didn't find any answer so we decided to move on to then to other llms also so we tried fast text ai it's actually a real llm i know most people were surprised i was also surprised to find out that it is actually a real llm that can be used for classification problems so we tried first text ai um that had a problem of the tokenizer so we we went and picked another tokenizer, another amharic tokenizer but then our llm was giving us an error so we changed to now but so we went and also picked but and the one we are currently using is but so we used but for classification i want to say that um but results were amazing as you can see here i also really do not believe that this is actually happening i my, I, you know, I actually thought that it was overfitting, but when I tested it again, okay, when we tested it again, it brought these results. As you can see, the evaluation loss, the precision, the recall. Yes, yeah, so we fine tuned it using 10 epochs. This was just the first round, and then we got these results. So we didn't go to other rounds because we already got this and this was higher than what we actually expected to get so yeah so we used the bat model yeah thank you that was all for but, my part but, but but okay so are you going to show us like what is the output or is it just um, the training loss is everything you were looking because the important because part is the important the part output. is the output okay uh, so okay so i will i will show you this notebook doesn't have the output but uh sorry this notebook doesn't have the output but i will show you the output um the output part this one doesn't have the output part the output part is in another notebook this one was the first notebook yeah so that notebook is not here currently okay and but did you try to do anything with it um, yes. Like, were but you able to generate? Were you able to do some yes, drag? I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. We were, I was able to like um, ask it to classify the ads, but it was hard to understand Amharic. But it was doing a great job. <laughs> that was that is all I can say. As for my part, I was able to try and classify the ads. First of all. Um, we used, first I used the retail and real estate data because our data was yet to be ready. So I used that for us to, to do these processes parallelly, hand in hand. When they prepare the data, I also fine tune the model. So 
when when I used that data, it really did a good job of kind of like classifying the two. Yeah, that is all I can say. Do you have any questions? Yeah, Babel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in, in a way that BART it's a known, like it works for multilingual, right? Now the yes. question is what can you do with it? Like already, even if you didn't fine tune, mm -hmm. you could have got the same, probably a good result. Now the question is, is that the case or not? Was your fine tuning the cause for the success? You know, so when you get a success, yes. when you get some result, you should yeah. not just take the result. You should okay. investigate it if it is actually what you think it is, right? So what if you didn't, you know, what if, what if it's because there was a mismatch and that the precision and recall, you know, where they, you know, computed in a very, you know, you're predicting the same thing that you are giving. In that case, it might be like that, or is it, you know, what actually is going on like in this one? So currently I can mm -hmm. only hear your excitement, but not, there isn't enough meat material there to see, you know, how good is it, is it and what is the difference? Okay. Like, because we know okay. Bart does that. You know, Bart is already multilingual, but what yes. can we do with it and what can we not do with it is the question. Okay, 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 fine. Yeah, but it, it, it's not about this as well, but every time it's probably, it's probably really good or it may just basically be like, yeah, you, you basically are calibrating BART itself, how good it is in classifying. Now, which one is it? Is, is the data, the one that you used, the fine tuning, is that helping it or not? Mm, I so think... it's answering some questions, you know, it's like, it's not about getting results, answering questions will help oh. a lot. Um, uh, I think so... the data actually mm -hmm. helped in, basically, but is really good actually in classification, that I do know, but I also think it is not that good in classifying languages that are not in English. It is really good at classification in English, but it is not that good in, at classification in languages that are not in English. So that is what I can say currently okay. so far. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So Rodolf will take over to the rug part. Thank you. Okay, uh, Alessandra, can you come again with the slide? Okay. So before Alessandra will come with the slide, I can start uh, presenting what we did for the other part. So for the other part, we did a job in two parts, the retrieval and the generation. So for the retrieval, first of all, what we did is to create a, a, create a, a class where we create a class where we define the, the different uh, uh, functionality that we'll be using in the retrieval. So the function that will uh, load the, the PDF that we want to, we want from which we want to extract uh, information first. We, we split that, another function for splitting and another function for chunking. So after doing this, we, uh, we embed the chunk, of the, the chunk of the test into, uh, we, we do the, the embedding using by default uh, the open AI key uh, the reason why we uh, we use that one is because it is fast and uh, we didn't uh, as we didn't uh, I didn't push our model into hangy face. I can't even try to use uh, our embedding. So I use that embedding for default. And after this, uh, the we try to which are two 
to vector store. You try fast CPU because uh, I, it is very easier for, for implementation. And you try, you also try a uh, chroma. So uh, you try both uh, of, uh, of the vector uh, store. And after that, uh, where we were able to store our embedding chunk. Uh, so the, the problem, is, uh, Rodolf, is that yes. what we are seeing and what you are talking is different. Can you guys synchronize? Oh, OK. Uh, please can. OK. Alessandra, can, can, can please leave. I will, share, I will share the one here. It is better. OK. OK. Yeah. Uh, so because we are running out of time so just let's make it yes, faster yes. yeah 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 can you see my screen yes it's yeah. okay so this is what i was talking about i was i was saying that we are uh we created a class where we uh, we define our different function uh, that will allow us to load the data, the, the data first, the external data, uh, another function that will uh, chunk uh, the test that we have uh, extract from our our external data, and after that we we use a open AI embedding to embed our chunk of tests. And uh, uh, we, after that, we store the embedding test into a, a, a data store, a vector, a vector store, I want to say. So uh, I, was, I was saying uh, we implemented uh, two of them, a uh, fast CPU and uh, Chroma. So, for the sake of the implementation, uh, we choose the, the the fast one, and also to make it uh, to make it quick, uh, fast, uh, we use all we use uh, uh, also the, uh, the 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 uh, the embedding memory uh, that uh, language lang uh, language language allow us to use. So once we we retrieve. Uh, the information when uh, if you come next time it will be very fast so after that we uh, we imp we implemented this uh, GU using a stream so what will happen when we we browser we upload the uh, the, the external data here and we retrieval uh, after retrieval uh, we can go to that where we put an automatic prompt and uh, right here uh, the user can can tap uh, what he wants uh, the, 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 the can put the brand and uh, the, the spot I can I can uh, say like example uh, I want uh, I want an adver adver uh, advertisement on Adidas uh, uh, for uh, in football for instance so this one we generate uh, an automatic uh, catchy prompt for a uh, prompt for us. Then we will come here again and put in the chat and sorry and put in the chat and then uh, that will generate us uh, the the uh, the advertisement in Hamaric normally. So uh, that's basically what we did in the uh, rag part and. Uh, but for the the general UIG, we, we didn't have enough time to to do that. So, in general, uh, what we have done for the last part was the data cleaning and the labeling and the uh, fine tuning using the bed model and the rack system. And for the future work, we we think that we. We will try the Lama and the Gary model and compare the, dif the different model. And also for, as you said, for the, the bed model we have used, uh, we're gonna test it 
and make sure that yes, it's not because bet is is working in general well, but uh, because uh, uh, it really integrates our learn from our data. That's why it's it giving us uh, this uh, amazing results. So, <clears throat> in conclusion, we can summarize that yes, for the last past week we we try a lot of things uh, like fine tuning different open source LLM like Bert, Lama, and Gary in order to generate ads in Hamari. But finally, only uh, we get a, a result with bad model and uh, we try to build also a right system to generate relevant contest. Okay. Thank you. Th yeah. Thanks. And um, again, a general advice for everyone. If you think you have a result in a work, like this is a work environment, you must make sure that you can answer some questions, not just show, because for example, there are stickle issues that can come. For example, if the input you give is, you know, like everything the same, you can get a high accuracy in everything. Now, how do you know, or how do you, you have to answer questions, those, those types. And this is normally what happens like at work, like we are excited. We, we might be doing the most amazing work, but we don't sell it. So selling means to try to really, once you get a good result, to, to around it, to learn more about it so that you can answer questions. And in that way, the good result, the effort that you put is now sold. So that's called a selling component. Uh, another part that is a general for everyone is that you must train yourself. I mean, for most of you, probably that in a normal environment in a job environment, they might still think, okay, you know, you, you haven't, you're not understanding the online environment because you are taking way more time, sometimes speaking repeated stuff. But overall, it's really good work. So I have to give you that feedback. But even if I'm, um, you know, even if these are just, it's in general, this is really good. Everybody worked together. There were lots of wins that you, you in every group that you have, you have overcome your challenge. Conceptually, it was difficult. You have now, by now, you have understood many things. It's just a matter of time. There were challenges from a computational perspective. For some of you, the, the instances didn't work as expected. For most of you, probably didn't work as expected. And there were also conceptual data issues that took so much time. But overall, now you can think of it. Now you're not talking about what is an LL, open source LLM or, you know, QLora or, you know, the bytes and um, bits and bytes, all of that and hugging face, so many things overcome and achieved. So in a way that when you present, even if you don't, you didn't do as much as you wanted, you should own your work and present it as if this is the best work, you know, in, in its glory. In that sense, actually, group six and some groups have all today, group six in mostly spoke in that term, even if, of course, it was slightly longer uh, and they should reduce, but they didn't get, they didn't seem to get down by the results that, you know, they expected, uh, the, the difference between expected and uh, what was gone. So you should always present it as if, like, you know, this is the best work, motivated and, and, highlight what works, what doesn't work, what should be. I think most people highlighted that already, what they should do next, what was not working, what is working, but the mood is very known. You know, you can feel it that you are just presenting it. You were not owning it. And this should not happen. You should almost always own whether it's, a, you know, the work goes as expected or below expected. I hope that that helps. Um, was there anything from yesterday's discussions? who wants to show for the next five minutes. Uh, were there any progress made? If so, there is five minutes. Otherwise, we can cut, we can call it here. OK. So it seems there's no hand. So that means everybody is happy with what they got. And you know, this week is a different challenge. And I, am, I usually don't like to bring the last week's challenge on Tuesday. But just because we had, we had everybody had to present. That was the you know the the two weeks project. So, but from now on, just focus. There will be other um, LLM based 
projects in two weeks. And so you, sh you, you will have your chance. So right now, focus and try to do as much as you can um, for the current week project, okay? And really, really almost always don't look at the empty part of the glass, but look at the very, you know, the filled part of the glass. You have two weeks ago, you probably cannot say most of the words that you are saying now. And not only that, you have learned just so many things you, can't, you didn't say it now, you have learned. So you should really feel proud and happy. And, you know, whatever you got, it's, it's a lesson for the next one. Okay. Awesome. And I think we are going to be continuing maybe with the tutorials if there are. And, but let's uh, stop the recording and we can call it in. And congratulations, everyone, and thank you.